like to talk with you today about another technique it's used in stuttering therapy slow rate slow rate speaking more slowly seems to have a universally beneficial effect for people who stutter and enables them pretty much without effort to speak more fluently despite the ease of the technique slow rate is really very hard to teach in clinic so I want to talk a little bit about why I think slow rate works I'd like also to tell you a little bit about uh, why I think it's difficult to teach and for clients to use, and then give you some tips for teaching slow rate in the clinic. My thought about why slow rate is so effective has to do with looking at speaking as a motor skill. There's a speed at which your motor skills begin to deteriorate in accuracy, and so when you do that activity slower, like I'm going to demonstrate with these blocks, there's an optimal speed at which you can work effectively. So let's take a look at an example with the blocks. I'm going to try to build a block tower as accurately and efficiently as I can. You'll notice that I was able to stack the blocks in a fairly uniform way that in ensured that the tower was going to be built effectively. Let's see what happens when I try to do it faster. Here we go. Not nearly as good. I was going too fast to be effective at building the tower. My motor skills just weren't good enough to do that. And if you think about speech and there being an optimal speed for your motor mechanisms to work, I think that has something to do with why slowing rate is an effective means of improving fluency in just about everyone who stutters. So if using slow rate is so beneficial to fluency, why do people who stutter have such a difficult time using it consistently? I think there's a number of reasons for this. You can see people who don't stutter, when they get anxious or excited and have some emotion going on, rate is one of the first things that increases. Also their pitch increases. Hi, I can't believe that I'm seeing you again. Uh, for the person who stutters, there's an added component to that emotion, and that is being anxious and fearful that they're going to stutter when they speak. Behaviorally, what we see is, along with the increase in rate, there's an increase in muscle tension, which increases disfluencies. There's often an abrupt start in speech, like that. And there seems to be this rushing and impatience, almost impulsivity, when a person is anxious. And I think those are the factors that really serve to impede and anyone's ability to implement a new, even though relatively easy, technique under these stressful situations. So how do we teach slow rate in the clinic? The first issue is, how do you measure it? What I recommend is that you, in your head, set an ideal of the speaking rate that you'd like to use, that you'd like your client to use. And when instructing your client what to do, the first thing you should do is model that rate for the client. I'd like you to read this passage at a rate that emulates the one that I'm trying to use now. You'll notice my tone and affect kind of go down too and become much softer and easier in the process. After the client reads for less than a minute, maybe 30 seconds, start giving him feedback about his rate. There's corrective feedback if he's going too fast or if he's right on target, tell him that to make sure that he knows. And then at the end, summarize by how effective he was and the Im impact that using slow rate had on his fluency. So teaching is one of the, the parts of, of uh, using slow rate that I think we first need to address. 
please know how effective your modeling is. There's nothing more difficult to do as a client that when you're being asked to speak slowly. When your clinician is talking like this, and very often clinicians are a little anxious in therapy, and if you think about occasions that you've had to speak with other people, we tend to emulate their rate. When they're fast and excited, our voice tries to go up and match it. When they're slow and lethargic, we tend to reflect that in our speech too. So as a clinician, know the importance and the significance of effective modeling in your work with your client. Sometimes clients don't realize also that there are different speaking styles for different occasions. And for example, using introductions as a situation, it's important to say your name very slowly to give the listener the opportunity to hear and understand and comprehend the name that you're introducing. Hi, my name is Gary Rentschler. I remember there was a time in my own therapy when I was really struggling saying my name that I kind of combined the two words together. Hi, my name is Gary Rentschler. And people would say, what? And that was really defeating because I'd have to do it all over again. And I learned that taking the time to go slowly and making it an effective, easy to understand uh, pronunciation helped me and the listener. Another uh, perspective that I take and try to offer the client is that they're responsible for their message getting understood by their listener. In other words, my job as the speaker or as the communicator is not just dumping what I have to say, not just giving my message and uh, hoping that the client or the, uh, my listener understands them, but my job is to give them the time to be able to listen and understand and think about what I'm saying. If you've ever had the example or had the experience of taking a class and the instructor talking so fast that you had all you could do to take notes, that's what I'm talking about. That instructor might as well just write out the notes and distribute them to class because the students don't have time to think about what he or she is saying. And so being an effective communicator means presenting your information, offering that information to your listener at a rate that lets them think through what you're going to say. Amongst the things we also see and you have to be prepared for is that from the client's perspective, talking at a rate even like this sounds really distorted. Remember when you're anxious, it changes your perceptions. And for the client who's anxious and used to talking at a rate like this, Speaking at a rate like this sounds to them like I'm speaking like this. And I've had many clients say to me, you know, that people are going to think I'm really strange if I talk like that. And so often I have them listen to themselves speak at a rate like I'm speaking at now. And frequently they'll say, wow, that doesn't sound as slow as I thought and listen to my fluency. So that may be one of the obstacles that, uh, that you'll face in trying to help the client implement slow rate in different situations. Most clients don't recognize at first, speaking at a slow rate necessitates a change of lifestyle. For example, if we went out to lunch together and I ordered a small salad because I wanted to lose some weight, that would be a really good thing to do. But then if I went and ate the rest of my meals and snacks the way I always did, I wouldn't have changed much at all. So part of learning slow rate is really to incorporate that into your lifestyle. Just like people who are, are sincere, sincerely uh, trying to lose weight need to change the way they think about eating and exercising. And for the person who stutters, you'll notice often, as soon as the activity is over, their speed goes, their rate goes right back to where it was before. They haven't embraced the lifestyle and, and, and taken slow rate to be part of who they are. And it really takes an adjustment to feel like I can be a different person and people aren't going to react to me differently than they usually do. So let's watch Renee work with her client teaching him to use slow rate. 